Well, good morning, Dallas Church. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our online gathering on this first day and first Sunday of 2023. Pastor Ben here, glad you've joined in. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can get on that chat and uh, shoot us a, a hello, a shout out, even uh, put some prayer requests out there, but interact with us as we're here online today on the first day of 2023. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Now let's worship. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love. You're slow to anger, your name is great, and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Worship His holy name. 
worship your holy name. Well, Happy New Year, Dallas Church. Welcome to 2023. I'm so glad that you're joining us um, online for this. And I think we got good stuff coming ahead for us in 2023. For me, the new year just always is um, a season where I start new things. So often the Bible reading rhythm that I've adopted goes from January to January. And I think back to a simple tool called the Life Journal that I have used, Pastor Ben has used, many people have used um, as we approach a new year to just kind of have a new rhythm of getting into God's Word. And so I'm just excited for what's coming down um, the pipe for us. Well, so for 2023, we are starting our first ever multi-series journey through a book of the Bible. We are going to be doing 48 messages from the book of Matthew. And what, what better thing for us to focus on as a church family than one of the gospel accounts that talks about the way that Jesus lived and what he taught and what he showed us about what it means to be people of the kingdom of God. So I'm, I'm really excited for us as we're jumping into this series. That will, episode one will start next week. And for this Sunday of the new year, what we're gonna do is a special little bonus ode um, with some of the backstory of this. Because here's what we read in Galatians. In Galatians 4.4, 4, it says that when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And, and the way the New Living Translation would translate that would say that at the right time, Jesus came. At that perfect right time. And, and so there's some background to what was going on at the time um, that Jesus showed up in the world and things had changed from the end of Nehemiah or the end of Malachi and the end of the Old Testament. And if you're maybe like me and you grew up going to Sunday school, I feel like I have a pretty good handle and a good understanding of the overarching story of the Old Testament. And I think our church has gotten really good at focusing on how that overarching story from Genesis all the way up to the book of Matthew uh, talks about Jesus. But there's a gap in between. There are 400, roughly, years of silence, which also gets called the intertestamental period, where we don't have any biblical resources talking about that time frame. And what I want to do this morning is this is going to be a really quick, rough and ready crash course through that intertestamental period. And everything I'm going to say, you're going to find smart people who disagree with me on either side, and you're going to find a mountain of research that could back up any one of these things. So we're going to deal with some generalities. But my goal here is to help kind of paint a picture of the major characters so that as we read the book of Matthew, that we are good readers of God's word, that we can kind of get a good picture of the world that Jesus lived in and the conversations that he had with people. Here we go. In the intertestamental period, in the years of silence, we call them the years of silence because there's no new scriptures that get written in that time. You have the rise of this brand new crazy thing called Hellenism because Greek culture had influenced the whole rest of the world because of this one guy named Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great had gone on a campaign of conquering so much of the ancient world, and he had one of the largest empires that would ever be controlled by anyone in all of history. But Alexander the Great, I personally don't think he was that great 
because he didn't hang on to it very long. He died off on the march to conquer new territory and then left no heirs, no infrastructure, so that his generals just had to divvy up all the chunks of his empire and fight each other for it. And so God's people, the Jewish people, found themselves right in the middle of those conflicts. And so you run into these guys called the Seleucids. And one of the worst of these guys was named Antiochus Epiphanes. And he had started this campaign to basically eradicate Judaism and bring in um, culture and things that were really offensive to the Jewish people. He declared um, some laws so that they were no longer allowed to practice circumcision, which if you understand the Old Testament, like thousands of years, all the way back to Abraham, that had been the mark of the covenant in God's people. And so when he declared that and when he made that illegal, all of a sudden it was an affront to God's people. Well, then he took it one step farther and started to sacrifice pigs on the altar in Jerusalem, which if you understand any of the laws of Moses, you know that is a really bad news situation. And so there were Jewish people that rose up against him. One of the most famous was Judas of Maccabeus. Uh, the Maccabees, maybe you're under familiar with that book. His nickname was The Hammer because he brought the hammer to those Greek people. They were freedom fighters that fought off the Greeks. And in this time period, you've got um, that Hellenistic culture that really came in. But even though they fought these Greeks, even though they fought off the imperial control and set up their kind of own little kingdom, the culture wars had already been won. Hellenism had already influenced the people of Jesus's world. And with Greek culture and Hellenism, you brought education and athletics and healthcare and entertainment, you know, stuff that we don't have in our culture at all today. And later, on this bedrock foundation of Greek culture that came in, the Roman Empire found its, um, raised its head. The Roman Empire came in. And if you know anything about Roman culture, it's basically Greek culture with a paint job. Instead of Zeus, we have Jupiter. Instead of this, we have that. And so the Roman people came in, the Roman government and the empire takes over, um, with the Jews, and there were basically four approaches to how they were going to deal with Hellenism in the time of Jesus. You had the Sadducees who fully embraced Hellenism. They said, all right, you know, you bring the health care, the power, we want to have comfortable lives. And so the Sadducees were the priests, they were the aristocrats, and they were actually the guys who went and got King Herod to be their king to deal with Rome. But because he was so wealthy, these Sadducees thought, well, we're going to bring him in, we'll let him deal with Rome on our behalf. They were corrupt and if you remember the moment when Jesus overturns booths in the temple, other writers would write about just how corrupt and how um, unethical the practices that um, Annas and Caiaphas were having in the temple courts. And so the Sadducees, they embraced this Roman culture. And then they also had these guys called the Herodians or the Hellenists. They hung out with them as the Sadducees. Well, then you had the Zealots and the Essenes. These two people said, culture is corrupt. We're going to distance ourselves from it. And so the Essenes, they left and formed their own little community in what's called Qumran. And they're important because they said, we're going to isolate ourselves away from everyone and just focus on God's word. And when they did that, they preserved God's word. And actually in the 40s, we discovered these things called the Dead Sea Scrolls because the Qumran community and the Essenes had taken that away and preserved that for us. Well, then you've also got these guys called the Zealots. And the Zealots said, we are so upset with Rome, we're going to form a military rebellion. And so they fought and they were rebellious insurrectionists all throughout um, the time of Jesus and all throughout that area of Judea. And that was their approach to how they were going to deal with Rome. 
And then the final group that I'll talk about is maybe the one that we would have the most familiarity with, and that would be the Pharisees. And the Pharisees, many of them moved north from Judea up into Galilee, and many of them said, we are going to focus on God's word. We're going to focus on obedience to the text and radically living out what we see in God's word. Now, it's interesting because we have a, a habit of giving the Pharisees a bit of a bad rap because we're so familiar with the ways that Jesus calls them out. As we go through Matthew, we are going to find lots of moments where Jesus is calling out the Pharisees um, for who and what they are, what they're doing, how they're approaching God's word. I mean, they did have some things that they needed to shore up, or they did have areas where they were straight up wrong. But the idea, and actually, if we look at the Pharisees, um, a lot of these are largely the ordinary people. The Sadducees are the aristocrats. They're in power. The Pharisees are the normal people. They're working jobs. They are living out their lives around Galilee. And it is amongst those people that Jesus finds some of his disciples. He finds Peter and Andrew and some of these guys hanging out up there. And it wasn't until I was listening to a Bible teacher who said it this way. But if we look at the story of the Gospels, Jesus is going to spend three years in dialogue, in ministry, working with these Pharisees. He's going to spend one week with the Sadducees in Jerusalem before he ends up dead. These are the different responses um, that, that people had to Rome and to the world that they were dealing with. Well, why is that important? Because when we look at Jesus, all of these people are present. All of these people are hanging out with him. People from each and every one of these categories. And all of these people, they had responses to the times that they lived in. And, and just like you and I, we have responses and opinions to the times that we live in. But at the feet of Jesus, around Jesus, the community of Jesus is full of different kinds of people. And I'm, I'm excited for what God is going to do. I think God has great things ahead for us. If we can be a community that lives out the words of Jesus, if we can be a community that lives out that new kingdom life that he calls us toward. So I'm excited for us as we go on this journey through the book of Matthew. And let me tell you a couple other things that we have coming up in 2023. I want to I ask us the question, how is God calling you to grow in the new year? What is it that God is calling you towards? Some of us, maybe the new year is a good time to look at different areas of our life. One of these things that we've got coming up in January, we've got a week of prayer and fasting. Uh, I have never really been a part of something like that in a church community, but I am excited for what this is going to look like for us. We're going to have a digital training and some podcasts and videos available for you if um, you want to learn about fasting a little bit more before we get started on this. And then uh, Monday through Thursday of that week, we'll be opening up the sanctuary and inviting anyone to come in and pray from 5.30 to 6.30. So as you're coming home on your commute, maybe you can stop in um, and pray with us. And that will end with a night of worship at Village Church. We're gonna have a bunch of different groups that launch in January and in February. And maybe one of these is for you. We're gonna kick off um, the Rock Solid Finances class, and that will happen halfway through January. Uh, maybe if health or nutrition is somewhere you wanna grow, we'll have a, a vegan cooking class. Um, or maybe you wanna jump in with the volleyball group that happens every Thursday night with Daryl Dumond. Um, we're gonna have men's breakfasts coming up in this next year. And if you're ready for a Bible study or connecting with um, a spiritual growth class, uh, Joyce Garland's What If Jesus Was Serious group is gonna start their second semester. They went strong through semester one, but you've got an opportunity to join in on that. Um, or with the Bible Study Fellowship men's group with Mike Kirkland. Um, and then of course, youth group is gonna keep meeting once a month. There's some opportunity for us to grow our impact in 2023 as well. 
We'll have a disciple maker training um, and other ways that we'll reach out to our community. We'll bring the Warming Center back in February, the one service, which just was such an amazing time of worship with our community and all the churches gathered together. That's coming this summer. Block Party is gonna come back in some way, shape or form, and you cannot miss the Crazy Days Parade, which is just one of those beautiful moments for our church to show up. And of course, all this, is accessible through the Church Center app, which is a great way to stay connected to Dallas Church from your phone. And so I'm excited for what God's gonna do in 2023, and we'll see you guys next Sunday. And worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. and is and is to come with all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings you are my everything and I will adore you thank you Lord Praise to the King of Kings. You 
And actually, David Bessenbacher this year, he did, um, okay, I knocked the glasses off and broke them. <laughs>